Hey folks, John with Complete Technology Solutions, your friend in less lethal self-defense. All right, guys, this one was requested. I am so sorry this got stalled. And when you, um, you're going to understand why as we go along here. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to take apart this Snow Peak CP300 Defender 50. So little disclosure here, guys. Um, I actually did this mod on another CP300, the one that you actually saw in the video. Um, if you didn't see that video, I'll toss a link up here for you. Um, this thing is way cool. I mean, I had people saying it looks like something out of uh, uh, Blade Runner, and, and it is. I mean, really, the octagonal barrel, the, the look of it, the feel, it's pretty futuristic. But hey... When it came down to actually firing it, we were getting results like this. Aiming it, and we're going to see if we're going to get any measurement right now. Wow, guys, that actually feels pretty powerful. Hold on, let's try it again. 395. 395, okay. 370. There we go. Look at that. Talk about a, a rupture ball when it hit. Jeez, all right. 364 and out look 350 to 380 fps is not bad especially if you consider you're going to be firing you're going to be firing a good quality pepper ball or at least you should um you definitely don't want to depend everything you're doing on a uh, uh, any kind of a kinetic round when you're firing under that 500 range but i felt like we could do better and i was crazy curious as to what was in this Wait till you see what's in it. So let's go ahead and get right to it, guys. All right, I'm going to move Stumpy around here. And what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to move Stumpy down to a position where he is right over the launcher. That way, hopefully, you guys are going to be able to get a really good view of what we're doing here. All right, and I'm going to sit down and get comfy. This does not take long, and frankly, you're not going to believe how easy this mod actually is. Okie dokie, there's our Snow Peak Defender. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, guys, is we're going to go ahead and remove the drum. Now, it's not necessary, but we're going to do it anyway. So grab these two little pins right here, slide forward, out comes the drum. Now, this is where it differs a little bit. You've got the same screws on the side to actually pull the two halves of this weapon apart, but... This slide is a tad bit different than uh, anything that we've got on any of the other lines. So what you have to do is you've got two pieces, one that is actually notched into a top piece. So the easiest way to do that, I found, is to take a prying tool. And what we're going to use is these little plastic things I use for cell phone repairs. And you want to put it up under the side and kind of pry up lightly. Guys, don't go crazy with this because you do not, under any circumstances, want to break that off all right once you get it pried up in the front pry it up in the back gently there you go all right once you get it there it will come right off and as you guys can see that is a very long plastic pin okay and then on the other side the other piece just falls out so essentially what you got is that plastic pin right there sits right in there and that's all there is holding that on is pressure so keep that in mind when you're taking that off. Be super, super careful. Now what we're going to do is we're going to unscrew one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen screws. Now I'm going to go ahead and unscrew this here, but I'm going to speed up the video so you don't have to watch it all the way through. Here we go. All right, guys. So as you can see, we've got all of our screws loose. And by the way, if you uh, uh, this will definitely wear out your hand. I've had people ask me why I don't actually use a, an electric screwdriver to do this, guys. Um, the problem is you're doweling these screws into plastic, and it's real easy to over-tighten with an electric screwdriver. And I kind of like that tactile feedback when you're unscrewing things and screwing them back in. So that's the reason I don't. Now, uh, once you get to this point, guys, you don't necessarily have to take out this bottom plug, but we'll do it. In. Now, you know what? I'm going to leave it in just to illustrate a point. All right. We're going to use our separator, and at the front of the weapon, we're going to separate the weapon a little bit. There you go. And follow it down all the way down to the back of the weapon. Okay, once you got it separated, lift it up and off. Uh, we're going to pause here for just a second, guys. Anybody want to take a guess what that looks like? Oh, wait. It gets better. 
All right. So in order to remove this mechanism out of here, what we're going to do is now this has got something that the uh, TR50 does not have or the HDR68. Um, on top of the spring, which actually controls this uh, uh, barrel going in and out, which is what holds tension on the drum. You've actually got a metal washer right there that fits on the spring and behind that little plastic holder. That's pretty cool. You know, occasionally when you put these things back in, that will bind up, and you have to be real careful about that. But that little washer right there is pretty nifty. Now, you'll notice we pulled everything all out together. That's nice and easy to do on this one. On the, there you go, on the lock, you see there's that hole that the pen went through. And here's the barrel. We're going to slide it out. All right, guys. So I want to show you, first of all, how easy the mod is. I want you guys to understand when I found this, I couldn't believe this. Now, you know that on the TR-50 and the HDR-68 that your valve block has got to be removed from right here. But you also know that that thing is typically pretty tight. It's fused uh, in with some aluminum like uh, uh, ears that pop out. So you have to either pull it out real hard from the back using a screwdriver or disassemble it and punch it out from the front, which is the easy way to do it, at least in my opinion. Now, what I want to do is I want to open up this valve for you. Oh, by the way, i got to show you guys this. Now, I haven't advertised this yet, guys. So I was doing the mod on the HDB-68, the shotgun. The valve on this, as you can see, is probably half inch to maybe, yeah, a quarter to a half an inch. On that HDA-68, it's, or excuse me, HDB-68, it's about two and a half inches long. So what I did is I took a standard valve tool and I'm going to try to show you this. I drilled out the center. See the hole? So that you can actually use this on a longer valve. I will have these available for sale before long. As you can see, that is custom made. I literally had to have a, a welder drill this thing out and then re-weld it. So it was, you know, it was definitely a, a work. But now that we got it, it seems to work pretty darn good. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to open up this valve real quick. And I want to show you guys something just to illustrate a point. And uh, it's going to blow your mind, I promise. All right. So we're going to open up our valve. There we go. All the way up. Yeah, the first time I did this, guys, I kind of knew what I was looking for because the design was so much the same. Now, you see how much pressure that's under? Be very careful when removing that valve because you're going to be under a lot of pressure with that spring right there. Let me show you why the spring is there. We're going to set our valve down. We're going to pull our spring out. That is the valve block. Guys, uh, you can literally, as you can see, you can shake the valve guide out of the box. Now watch, I'm going to tap it on, I'll tell you what, I'm going to tap it on this foam surface here. And there's the valve block. That blockage right there, guys, is all that stands between this weapon and full potential. And it literally pops right out from the bottom. As you can see, it's nice and clear in there now. Now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put the spring back in. The spring is not necessary at this point, but it's not hurting anything. I mean, you might lose a little bit of, of uh, 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 volume in there with that spring, but not really. The whole goal of that spring was to keep that valve in place. But we're going to leave it in anyway, and we're going to put our valve assembly back on. All right. Now, at this point, guys, I know you're going to laugh. That's the mod. It's actually done at that point once you put this valve back on. But we want to go a little bit further with this because I really want to show you something that uh, kind of caught me off guard. When I first did one of these, nobody had a teardown on this. So there were no schematics of it, nothing on the inside, nothing I could really compare it to. So what we're going to do is I want to open this thing up. Now, you're going to notice that the screws on this are in the exact same place as the TR-50. Anybody want to guess what we're about to find when we open this? Mm-hmm. Now... There is one thing I did find. If you do this yourself, you need to be extremely cautious because although the parts inside this are identical, let me say that again, they are exactly the same as the TR-50. They, the body is actually a little bit thinner, which means that when you separate these two halves, what will happen is this will, the trigger will slip off that little pole there because it's thinner and cause it to come loose, which means putting it back together can be a total unabridged nightmare. Um, the way I figured out to do it was to actually hold the trigger down in place while I reseated the top here. So let me go ahead. Let me get our screwdriver. We're going to separate this. See, I even know what a nightmare this is, and I'm still doing it for you guys. See how that works? All right, cracking this side over here. 
And I'm telling you, you are going to be floored at exactly how much alike this is. Doing the top. There we go. Now, I'm going to hold down on this trigger because I know exactly what is uh, in store for me when this comes up. All right. You see the trigger wiggle? As soon as I moved this, the trigger wiggled and tried to come out of place. All right. I'm going to pull this apart here, guys, slow and steady. All right. You'll notice I'm still holding it down. What do you see, guys? That is a TR-50 totally. Same trigger mechanism, same spring loadout, same advancing mechanism. In fact, I would be amazed if the valve block, aside from this, didn't actually fit with, a, uh, with a, uh, an HTP-50 or even a, a TR-50, which means you might theoretically be able to change this out for some sort of a punch button if you really wanted to. And in a future video, we're probably going to do that. But as you can see, everything, the follower, the spring, the, uh, uh, where your barrel goes in here, this lockout, they're all identical. Pretty cool, huh? So we're going to notice I have not taken my finger off that trigger, guys. If you do, this trigger will come up and you'll have to contend with this spring. There we go. So we're going to go ahead and put this back together now. And I'm going to probably do a complete teardown video just like I did on the um, uh, TR-50 or excuse me, the HDR-68. I'm going to do it on all of them, including this one. But for right now, the point is the mod. So there we go. I just wanted to open this up to illustrate to you guys what you are looking at here. Anybody heard ACDC? Who made who? I'd love to know if Umarex cloned Snowpeak or if Snowpeak cloned Umarex. I am almost willing to bet the latter, but who knows? Maybe one day we'll find out. All right, screwing her back down here. Now, once you get it all resecured, guys, we're going to test the trigger mechanism, make sure everything is still advancing, moving properly. All right, all screws secured. Yes, all right. Pulling the trigger, making sure that everything is still advancing properly. There we go. As you can see, the trigger is still pulling, advancing properly. Everything is working good. All right, let's go ahead and put it back in here. Seat our body back in. I'm going to hold the front end of this up so that we can seat in our lock. There we go. And once it's in place, and we're going to try to line up that hole, guys, to where it's going to be on the uh, uh, down in here otherwise you have to kind of rotate it with your fingers when you remount that pin to go through it take your barrel slide it in push back on that ring and lock it in place guys that ring to me also that is a big improvement i kind of wish uh Umarex would do this on both of their models because it prevents that potential of binding up if that little ridge is over that plastic when you put the two ends together all right so let's go ahead and screw it back together here there we go. And once again, I'm going to crank this down, and I'm not going to make you watch. Here we go. All right, guys. So we have everything screwed back together here. Just like on the TR-50, guys, you can push that barrel forward, and if you're seeing it move freely, then you've got that in the right place. Now, in order to remount this pin that goes through, you're going to want to look in here, and you can rotate this loading mechanism right here just a little bit so that you can get to the hole. See the hole right there? So you push it forward and rotate it in. Then separate your pin, slide the pin in. It doesn't matter which way it goes, up or down, guys. Come to the other side. As you can see, there's your notch. Take your pin and secure it on there and lock it in place. There you go. Now you got that. All right. Now, the next thing we're going to do, guys, is we're going to go ahead and we're going to put in our drum. Slide that forward and lock our drum in place. And let's make sure everything is advancing. And it is indeed. We've got it. And that, guys, is all there really is to that modification. Um, it blew my mind not only how easy the mod was, but what really blew my mind is how much that looks like a TR-50. Yeah. Well, let's see what it did after we did the mod. Check out the results. Okay, folks, so as you can see, we actually have our range set up again here. We've got our FPS meter set here. We're going to go ahead and set this to feet per second. There we go. Now, I'm going to do the same thing we did last time, guys. I'm going to try to stand behind the camera so you guys can actually see uh, what we're firing. So we're going to be firing the 2.9 gram balls just so we can kind of get a, a good comparison to what we did last time. So we have a new CO2 cartridge in. We're going to screw it down once, 
twice, and you guys heard that pop out there. All right, let's see if we can actually get a reading here, guys. This is a little bit challenging. We're going to give it a shot. 516, 484, 445, 430, 438, and I think we're out. And we're out. See what I mean? We're going from the mid threes to the low fives with one simple mod. Once again, guys, if you own a CP300, do this mod. It takes you like five minutes. You don't even have to disassemble it as far as I did. Once you get the two halves off, you pull the valve, tap that thing out, you're done. That simple. And it doesn't leak. You get about 10 to 12 shots out of one CO2 cartridge, and there are no other problems. So you own it, do the mod. All right, the question I'm always getting, am I going to carry them? I have them. They will only be sold fully modded. So everyone that leaves here is going to have the mod done already. I will throw this in there in case you guys want it. But at the end of the day, they're going to go out fully modded and ready to go. Pretty cool, huh? Guys, thank you so much for watching. Sorry this one took a little while to get done, but I wanted to do it right. And when I opened that thing up, I knew, knew you guys had to see what I saw because it's pretty unbelievable. It really is. Uh, I got another brand new launcher. It's supposed to be coming in today. And uh, it has never been seen on YouTube. Stay tuned for that one. Have a fantastic week, guys. Bye-bye.